In this video, we're going to talk about the more unique matrix structures you will encounter on your test. This example is a four building block structure. In these types of problems, four elements are building blocks that interact with each other to create the remaining five elements in the matrix. The ways in which these building block elements can interact with each other varies from matrix to matrix. These interactions can look like building blocks combining to form new shapes, aspects of one building block changing the aspects of another building block, one building block causing certain parts of another to disappear or cancel out, and building blocks adding or subtracting from one another like an arithmetic problem. In this example, the building blocks are elements 1, 2, 4, and 5. These are combined together from top to bottom to give us the elements in the bottom row. They can also be combined from left to right to give us the elements in the right column. To find the missing element in these cases, it is easiest to combine the elements of the right column together or of the bottom row together. But you could also combine all four of the building blocks together to find your missing element. Here, elements 1, 2, 4, and 5 are the basic building blocks. If we wanted to build our right column of shapes, we would need to take the first two elements of each row and combine them to get the third element of that row. Starting with our first row, we would combine elements 1 with element 2 to get element 3. Then in our second row, we would want to combine elements 4 and 5 together to get element 6. If we wanted to build out the bottom row, then we need to do the same thing, but going vertically, adding elements vertically. So we're going to add element 1 to 4 this time, and that will give us element 7. Then we have elements 2 and 5. If we add these together, we will get the last element in that column, element 8. And finally, if we wanted to find our missing element, element 9, we would either have to combine the elements of the third column or of the third row. We could also combine all four of our building blocks together to get this kind of a shape. If I add element 1 to element 4 and add element 2 to element 4 and finally get our last building block, then we would have a perfect match of our missing element, element 9. Sometimes in building block matrices, an entire row or column could be made of building blocks. In this case, the entire first row combined with the entire middle row gives us the entire bottom row. So if we wanted to create this element, we would need to add together these two shapes from element 1 and element 4. And that would give us a perfect match of the third element in that column. If we wanted to get this shape down here, then we would need to combine the shapes from the first element in that column with the second element in that column, and that would give us a perfect match of the third element, or this H kind of shape. For this last column, I'm going to draw it because it'll be a bit easier to visualize. If we wanted to find the missing element, element 9, we would combine the shapes found in the first and second element, and that would give us a perfect match of the third element in that column, element 9. In this example, the left and middle columns are the building blocks that create the right column. When we are combining any two elements in the first two columns, the lines that those shapes share are going to cancel out and not be present in that third element. So if we look between element 1 and element 2 and identify the lines that are shared by both elements, we can see that those lines are not present in the third element. They have canceled each other out. What remains are the unique shapes and lines that are only present in one of each of the two elements. Let's take a look at the second row. Here, these three lines are shared between the two elements. And that means that those three lines are not going to be present in the third element. They've canceled each other out. This leaves behind a cross shape that is made up of the pieces unique to each of the first two elements. 
In the third row, the shapes that are shared are this arch and this line that cuts through the center of the shape, leaving behind just the unique pieces that create an S shape. This pattern of logic is called the two by two steps. It is a common pattern in which two processes happen simultaneously, starting from element one. One process starts in element one and continues two steps to the right. The first step colored in green and the second step colored in blue. The other process starts from element one again and goes two steps down, one step colored in yellow and then the other colored in red. As you can see in the diagram, Every element is some combination of these two steps. For instance, in the middle column, if we were to take two steps down from element two, we have completed the green step, added a yellow step, and added a red step. If we want to reach our missing element, element nine, we need to take the two steps to the right, green and blue, and two steps down, yellow and red. Let's do an example. In this two by two matrix, if we start in element one and we take one step to the right, we are adding a vertical line. We started with one line and now we have two vertical lines. If we take another step to the right, we'll be adding another vertical line, giving us three total vertical lines. If we were to start back at element one and take one step down, we add one horizontal line. We started with one line, now we have two. If we take another step down, then we will have three horizontal lines. To find the missing element, element nine, we would need to start at element one and take two steps to the right and two steps down. So we would add two vertical lines and add two horizontal lines, meaning that we will have three vertical lines and three horizontal lines total. This example is a special case of the two by two steps pattern called the diagonal wave. In this pattern, one step makes the same change no matter which direction you go. This makes several elements in the matrix identical to one another. If you started in element one and took one step to the right or one step down, you could end up with the same result, making elements two and four identical to one another. There are four different ways to get to the identical elements three and five. You could take two steps to the right, two steps down, one step to the right and then one step down, or one step down and then one step to the right. Elements six and eight are also identical because they are each three steps away from the starting point. The only two elements that are completely unique are elements one and nine, the starting point and the ending point of this matrix. This pattern of change from the top left corner to the bottom right corner takes on the shape of a diagonal wave, which is where this matrix gets its name. Sometimes, though it is much less common, the starting point can be element three instead of element one meaning that the wave will start in the top right corner and go down to the bottom left corner. In this case, element nine, your missing element will be identical to elements one and five. Let's do an example of a diagonal wave pattern. In this diagonal wave pattern, we are starting in element one and every step either to the right or down will add a line. One step to the right or down will add a vertical line. And then the next step will add a horizontal line. The next step would add a vertical line again, and then the next after that would add a horizontal. So we are alternating between vertical and horizontal lines here. If we took one step to the right or one step down, both of those shapes are identical, so I will mark them with the same color. Then our next three elements are all two steps away, so they are all identical. We added a vertical line in step two, so now we're gonna add a horizontal line to all of these elements. The next shapes are three steps away. So we either went one, two steps to the right and one down, or one, two steps down and one to the right. Therefore, these two elements are also identical to one another. We added a horizontal line in the last step, so now we're adding a vertical line in this step. Now, the only one left is our missing element, element nine. We just added one vertical line, so we need to add another horizontal line to complete this diagonal wave matrix. Now that you understand the more complicated types of matrices, you are nearly ready for your first full length matrix simulation. But first, the next video will teach you about valuable test taking and time management strategies.